Originally, hydraulic models were set up with a node-link topology, which was great for solving hydraulic equations. However, when you do a shutdown to isolate something, you really don't shut down a single pipe. And people try to simulate this by taking a pipe out of the model. And that's really not the right way to do it. You need to account for the location of isolation valves. And when you do this, sometimes you get surprises. You may have thought that you could just have a pipe break in this one spot and close two valves and be good. And it turns out you need to close six valves or something like that because of the way that the system was laid out when people weren't thinking necessarily about the isolation valves. It especially happens in places where the system has evolved over the years, where the pipe was put in in 1920 and they added another one that crossed it in 1936 and then in 1954 they added another one and they didn't put valves in all the time. They don't always think about that when they're upgrading the system. And that's where you find some surprises a lot or you'll find a place where there was a mile of pipe out in a rural area and you didn't need valves along this pipe. There's nothing no branches going off it or anything. But now, over the years, there's a shopping mall there, three subdivisions, a school, a factory, and all of a sudden, one pipe break can put out a thousand people. And you've got to keep up with this sort of thing. And software nowadays can do those kind of things. We use graph theory to go through and find those uh, distribution system segments that you can isolate. And it makes your, your ability to find these places easy. And most places are, are fine, but there are going to be these places where a little pipe break can knock out a big portion of a system.